From downtown Decatur, it's the Faber Files. Hello, I'm your host, Bill Faber. Because democracy demands debate, we present this program, a program of community interests and issues. Nowhere else on TV, radio, or newspaper are the community issues and interests presented in such an in-depth way. Tonight's program, we feature the Huntington Learning Center. It's the homework survival skills for parents. Our guest speaker is Regan Deering of the Huntington Learning Center here in Decatur. You're going to learn as parents very effective ways to help your child do his homework, her homework, and become better students and better citizens. Let's watch this presentation by Regan Deering of the Huntington Learning Center here in Decatur. We're talking with Regan Deering, who is the Executive Director of the Huntington Learning Center here in Decatur. Great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. What are some of the, maybe the top two or three problems that you see in students uh, through your Learning Center, Regan? Well, we do have a number of situations that arise at our center, and of course because each child is different, we do cater to all sorts of learning styles and concerns. If I had to pick one or two of the top um, frustrations, it would probably be homework. Um, you know, they are having battles at home, they can't get their child to bring their homework home or sit and finish their homework on a nightly basis, and it's affecting their grades. So they come to us to see if we can't help identify a bigger problem, which may arise from some skill deficiencies. And we're going to see your homework parent survival uh, presentation this evening. Yes, that's perfect. We offer lots of tips for how you can make homework a success at home. And if I had to say one other struggle would probably be our older students, our middle and high schoolers, having good organizational or study skills. Um, we do have a pretty intense program catered towards those two issues um, where we just talk, teach them about pulling out the right information, being able to have a consistent study time and make the most of their day. Those are skills that they can learn or use throughout their life. Absolutely. It's really important to start even at an early age with you know, making education a priority and having them feel that confidence in their educational skills to apply all the way through school and then into life. You know, it's interesting, I, over the years in, in hiring staff members and having the chance to work with them, it, um, surprising how some of them really had no clue about wh how to organize their work day or the work that was assigned them. Absolutely. Organizational skills are something that need to start in late elementary school all the way through middle school and high school. Budgeting your time throughout the day. Um, a lot of our children are committed to a lot of activities during their day on top of school, so we want to be able to reiterate to families and the students themselves that they need to manage their time and make it most effective. So if a mom or dad is having trouble with their child's, say, for example, reading skills or comprehension, uh, should they contact your Learning Center and can you help? Absolutely. We are located right here in Decatur. We're at 2828 North Main Street, just south of Pershing Road. And we do academic evaluations of each individual child because they are different. So that allows us to have a starting point on identifying strengths and weaknesses and develop, developing an individualized program for each child. We have a 1-800 number. It's 1-800-CAN-LEARN. And we also have a website, huntingtonlearning.com, which has information about our programs as well as general, general information for parents and educators. So let's say a mom or dad says, yes, I need your help, uh, Regan. What sort of um, protocol do you follow? What sort of um, time schedule uh, do you follow? Well, the first step is that academic evaluation. So if they call our 1-800-CAN-LEARN, we can talk to them about their specific concerns and arrange a time and a day to have their child come into our center. We do the evaluations after school, Monday through Friday, as well as on Saturdays. Um, and so we can schedule an appointment right away. So that, do you guys do tutoring? Is that your program or beyond the evaluation? Yes. Once we have the evaluation completed, we do design an individualized program for their child, and that does get conveyed through tutoring sessions. We offer um, services to children kindergarten through 12th grade in reading, writing, math, study skills, enrichment, and then we also have um, an ACT prep program as well. Guide to homework. So if you've come this evening, 
chances are you've got some at home that you may be having some homework battles with. So we're going to try and provide some practical advice to tackling common homework problems and then offer you some strategies that we use in our center to help combat these issues. So depending on the age of your student, there may be several reasons that you have homework or school frustration. Your child could lack confidence. Maybe they've always struggled with school. So each year that it gets harder, their confidence decreases. Perhaps they lack motivation, not interested in sitting down to do homework right at the end of the school day. They could be doing other things. There could be a skill deficiency. If your child has been passed through school grades but has a couple gaps along the way that may make homework more challenging. And organizational skills. This is often the case with a lot of middle schoolers and high schoolers as well, although the fundamentals start in elementary school, so we'll offer some tips for getting organized tonight. Of course, research has shown that homework does affect achievement in school, so we want to talk about making a consistent homework time and an effective homework time every single day. Obviously, you all care about your children. You're here, you're looking for tips to help them with these homework battles. So at Huntington, we talk about the three C's. And this process of encouragement works in place of rewards. So the first C is care. You care about your children. You want to see them succeed in school. You want them to feel success. You're concerned about their homework struggles. You don't want to see them struggle. You want them to feel that success. And the third point is communication. You need to be able to communicate with your child or children those cares and concerns so that we're all on the same page. Um, I'm sorry, I should say, in your booklet there is a page called the Huntington Solution that has these written down for you. The Huntington Formula, we talk about this with our families in our center. Together you want to define agreeable expectations. You should expect your child to do their homework every single night. That is an expectation that needs to be set from the beginning. Their job right now is to be a student. They have homework, that's their job. We go to work every day, we go to classes if you're in school. We know that our responsibilities lie in working. Their job right now is school and they've got at least 12 years of school, ideally, ahead of them. So you want to lay those foundations from the beginning. So when you're talking about a single homework session, you want to define the expectations in the beginning. I expect you to sit down for a certain amount of time and do these assignments, okay? You commit to achieve the expectations. I'm here for you if you need my help. We do want to foster independence during homework time. I'm sure many of you have sat down and you have to sit next to them the entire time, but you've got dinner to cook, you've got other children to take care of, you know, you have many things pulling you in all directions. So the goal is to get them to work independently. So you want to commit with your child that you're going to complete these homework sessions and you're going to strive together to fulfill these expectations. Can I just stop and ask, are there any particular homework issues that either of you families are having that you want to cover tonight. You just want to jump in when I, when I get there. Do you have any particular frustrations or battles? Any specifics? Yeah, staying on task. Staying on task, okay. Is that a general thing? Staying on task. Get outside, rush through it. Okay, rushing. Okay, wants, wants to get onto something else. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we will definitely cover those things. Um, okay. So the first step in an effective homework time every night is the learning atmosphere at home. You want to have a consistent study space somewhere that your child is doing their homework every night, so that there's no question where they're going to when the homework time is arranged doesn't have much clutter, so maybe the kitchen table is the best place, but if there's mail from the day, newspapers, leftover lunch, whatever, you want to try and declutter that space so that they can focus, not sneak a snack or take a look at the paper, which is more interesting than math homework, and no distractions. Obviously, households are busy places, so you want to try and find a place that 
and be the most conducive to learning. Some tools would be good lighting, a desk with a table, or a desk or a table with a chair, um, a good sturdy chair, not something too big. I know people do have smaller ones. You know, if the chair is too big, they're going to wiggle around and climb all over it. And then that's another reason not to be doing homework. So if you want to try and find something that is size appropriate as well, that can help myself. Um, all the necessary pen, paper, paper, scratch paper, nice paper for writing assignments. If you're prepared ahead of time, it's one more reason they don't need to stand up and go get something. That'll be 10 minutes before they come back with a nice pencil. Uh, a dictionary, thesaurus, and atlas. Might sound a little old school to some of you. Um, I can't tell you how many of our kids will say, oh, I just dictionary.com it. Just Google it. I don't need to know how to use a dictionary. But those skills are very important. Alphabetizing, being able to find the word, and being able to dissect the word. So have those tools ready for them. Computer access if you do need it. School books. Of course, we will tackle that problem also. Oh, I didn't bring my books home. Oh, I left them in my locker. Oh, it's on the bus. So we'll talk a little bit about how we can get those school books to be there. And an assignment pad or planner, also very key. Do your schools give assignment pads or planners to all the students? Do you do? Okay. Most of them do. Okay, good. We'll talk a little bit about how to um, use those efficiently. Yes. Like you're saying, we should have the same spot every time, mm -hmm. but in our house we have we have to move around because the kitchen table is fast, but then we have to up our right. So then there's a delay before he can get something to get to work. So, okay. And then sometimes if the other kids are in the dining room, then I take him into the office. Or, I mean, I've got a spot set up in each of those places, but do you think that keeps him, like, do you think that detracts from the effectiveness? It's possible. I think that, um, you know, just a new situation in a new room could lead to other distractions. Right. Um, so if you can be consistent, I do understand, yeah. of course, your, your reasoning behind that yeah. and you should what you can, but maybe only two spaces instead of three. Yeah. You know, uh, if the kitchen table is always somewhere you have to move from, maybe just don't use that as a general. Although yeah. the kitchen table is nice because then you can keep a hand on them. You know, right. you can kind of, we are going to try and foster independence with tips tonight, but you can, you know, then keep an eye on they're not getting distracted. You have to start with the kitchen table. Yeah. We do that, but I would try and make just one or two places there. But thank you for that. Okay, so once you've created a good learning atmosphere, another key is a consistent time. Uh, in your handout, you do have, I think it's page three, the weekly planner. So you want to flip back. There are a couple charts there. Okay, so the weekly planner, you don't want to write on this tonight because you can reproduce it, Xerox it. Um, it does have a space for you to itemize out the weeks. So down the left hand side, I'm going to get one to look over your shoulder. Okay, time in half hour blocks. Okay, so if your child gets out, let's say close to 3 o'clock, 3 or 5, maybe you want to start at 3 30. That's a reasonable time that you are actually home. Okay, so 3.30, 4, 4.35, all the way through bedtime, 8, 8.30. Okay, so you and your child or children, everybody should have their own, ideally, want to take a look at what you do after school each day. Where is your time already committed? Do you have sports practice? Do you have religion class? Do you have play practice? Do you always go to a friend's house on Tuesdays from 4.30 to 6? And you want to mark in those times that you already have planned. 